Okay, I'm going to sharpen a chainsaw chain on my, it's a Teco Mac. That's the saw grinder. And it does run both ways because when you grind your chain, you want to grind this link out, that link in. And I have that at 30 degrees for that cutter that it's 60 degrees and that wheel has a little bit of round to it. So when I'm done sharpening I gotta go back put a straight edge on there to make sure that that the cutter that this is below the cutter. So anyway we'll and when this comes down you just gotta nick it so you can adjust that with this. You turn it that way and it allows the chain to go back. You turn it that way and it allows the chain to go more into the wheel. So you can kind of see it's not enough there. This chain is pretty beat up. So somebody sharpened it incorrectly in the past badly. So we might have to take a couple runs around on it. I like to take a magic marker and mark the link I start with. Mark that one for the next time around. That way I know when I've gone all the way around the chain and uh, can set it a little deeper if I need to, which I'll have to with this one because this chain is really beat up. So anyway, I'll start sharpening it. We'll do a little video on sharpening a saw chain. Turn the switch on to run the wheel towards me. Just kind of see where we go from here. Need to set the grinder a little deeper, turn this on a little bit. Still need a little deeper. That looks pretty good. And the next link, that'll be every other. Every other link will be the ones that we sharpen. See, and that one isn't even biting in, so the chain is so beat up. take too much off the time I'm back at the link I started with and I think I'll just put a little bit more in and go around it a second time because it's in such bad shape. Okay that was two full runs around the, the chain sharpener. That looks all right. So I'll turn this, loosen this nut underneath here and turn it 30 degrees the other way. And then I'll I mark this other link and then I'll start on that link. And again, you don't want to take too much off. So that's kind of tight there. So I'm going to loosen this back a little bit and run the motor in the other direction. Now. Again, this is every other link that you do in this direction. And I'll go around this direction twice too because of the condition of the chain. Okay, I'm back to the one that I magic markered at. I'm just going to turn that a little tighter and go around a second time. You don't want to discolor your links by taking a huge hunk of mounter off. That's why you just do a little at a time. So when they're really beat up, just go around them two or three times. You keep after them once is enough. 
first time you run a chain of dirt, they're dull. So if you can keep your chain out of dirt, they last a lot longer. And that's two complete times around this way. Now if you don't sharpen, like if you sharpen one and not the other, the chain will just cut crooked in your wood. And you don't want that. So you want to sharpen them kind of evenly. And they feel pretty good. You put this on your chain. You want to see that this little part of the cutter here is ten thousandths below that part of the cutter. So that that and that need to be below that, that and that. Those are what you call your depth gauge. And they look, well, they could be cut down a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll put a flat wheel on here and then I'll straighten this up to 90 degrees, turn this to 90 degrees and then with this with the, with the uh, wider wheel on it. And then you just go to straight down on them. So I'll do that. Yeah, I'll change the wheel. Well, I'm changing the wheel. This, you can kind of see the way that, I don't know if you can see that or not, the way it's bubbled. But you can see the, the wheel that I use. And then I'm going to change the wheel to this wheel, which is square on the end. <clears throat> this is for the rakers and heavier chains and stuff. But this will straighten up the, the depth gauges, which I'm sorry, not 10 thousandths, 25 thousandths is what you want the depth gauges. So we'll put this wheel on and we will grind the depth gauge. Usually after I'm done sharpening these chains, they cut better than a brand new chain. Now, this is, I found the straight edge and the feeler gauge and everything I work with this. So the straight edge on there, that doesn't even come anywhere near fitting in the in there. So what I will do is get this thing so it's all right in position. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And then I don't want to take a lot off. And it feels like just touching it and I'm going to grind it back away from me. That took more than what it needed I think, but we'll soon find out. Won't we? Yeah, that's a loose 25 so we won't take as much off. This one you just do every link. Good right there. Now I'll just go around the chain. There's a screw on the sharpener. But... Okay, 
you don't have to do the depth of gauge every sharpening. Every two or three, but this chain looked like it had been through a war. So I had to take run it through here a couple of times. So these depth gauges needed from the chain being so dull and worn. And that's where I started right there. And that should do it. Just randomly check them around the chain. They all look good. Now, the thing to do is soak your chain in bar oil before you put it back on the saw, and uh, it'll be ready to go. It's a nice, sharp chain ready to cut. That's how you sharpen a saw chain on a Tecumek. And which this is the same exact model as the Oregon chain sharpener, just different color. This was the screw I was turning to adjust how far you can see it hits there. And that's where you adjust for how far you come down there. The way that this works, you can adjust it by turning this to run that in more or out more depending on where you want your wheel and then that just will bounce up. This knob under here you loosen and you can turn this. I'll set it back over here. That's the 30 degree. And that'll sharpen that link. This link, you turn it 30 degrees the other way, that link is for the way it's set and you set that at 60 as opposed to 90 and you have this wheel that's a little dressed a little round. Another note that I forgot to mention is you got to tighten this. This holds the chain in the jaw tight and then when you loosen it, it obviously loosens the chain to where you can move it. When this, when this is turned tight you can't move the chain and it holds it in place while you run the grinder on it. And this knob here turns, moves that one way or the other so it catches on your chain link squarely. And another thing about chains, this is a 16 inch off a 16 inch saw. So if you need to know what you got to do to buy a new chain, what you do is you count your drive links. These, these are the drive links right here. So this has 56 drive links around the whole chain and again you can take a magic marker and mark one then just go around and count all your drive lengths. So this is a 16 inch chain and it's got 56 drive lengths so if you go to your local home improvement store and you don't know which chain when you're looking at all the chains to get you might see two or three different 16 inch chains and you buy it and you get home and it's the wrong one. Well you obviously have to take your chain off to change the chain, so before you go to the home improvement store, take your chain off and count your drive lengths, and then when you go into the store, you'll know exactly what you need. This one, if I went into the store, I'd get a 16-inch, 56 drive link chain would replace this chain. This is off a Poland Micro XXV saw, and uh, that's what it uses. And I am making a video on the saw. Hopefully it'll run when I'm done. i got a carburetor kit on order for it. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching.